Heather, nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Nice uh, smelling loads of perfumes. I got to start with what are we wearing? A tummy. Um, so recently I have stopped eating wheat because I realised that was making me uh, unwell. It was part of what's been making me unwell quite recently. And um, I thought that was it. However, and my pains in my, around my stomachy area, shooting pains and stuff. So I'm not completely comfortable, but I wanted to do this. So um, I'm all right. I'm okay. But I'm just a bit like, I probably won't have as much energy as I thought I would have done because I was really up for this. I really wanted to catch up with you all. Hey Mandy. Um, but yeah, so it might not go on as long as I want it to because I'm, t I'm like, I'm gripping my stomach like a pregnant woman. It's like, it's so bloated. It's, it's horrible. So I, I've been, they've definitely not got wheat in them, but I've been overdoing it. And I've had quite a few naughty gluten-free snacks today and some gluten-free crackers, gluten-free bread. And I think I've overdone all of the alternative bread solutions and I just feel really unpleasant. But, <laughs> we'll carry on regardless. <laughs> um, hey John, I don't know why I can't see your, oh here it is, there it is. Um, hey John. Right, so uh, drink of the night then, we'll start with that. If you've got a drink, if you've got a snack, let me know. I've got a vodka and Diet Coke. Cheers. Just finished a set of three 12 hour day shifts, working from home. And so I thought I would just sneak in a little live stream. Uh, Maddie says, hope, I hope you don't mind me calling you Maddie. I just feel like it just comes out of my mouth without really thinking about it. Let me know if you'd rather me say Madeline. Maybe I'm just lazy, Madeline. It's three syllables, isn't it? And Maddie is only two. Um, let me know what you prefer. Uh, hope you feel better soon, she says. Heather is saying hi to John. John's saying hello all. Um, John's got a green tea. Very elfy, John. Very elfy indeed. Tony's here. Hello, Claire. Hello, everyone, he says. Uh, Madeline is happy with Eva. So, okay, Maddie. Maddie it is. Um, okay, so, scent of the night. Check out the dent in this. So, Maddie, on Instagram today, got a sample of this. And I know that you really liked it. And this is mine. I've only had, what, had a few weeks? if that, that's honey amber. And that is, I, I sent about five sprays in a sample to one friend. And apart from that, that's all where I love it. Um, it's so nice. It's a bit like Blue Lotus. I put them in the same ballpark. Honey amber is a frangipani, a white floral, but very, very smooth and balmy and calm and lovely. And it's kind of beachy. I think if you like uh, Shanti Carl's Frangipan, if you know that one, which I love, um, it's that ballpark as well. Uh, very, but very, very smooth and peaceful and calm and just, just lovely. Uh, John says, bloody hell, Claire, pear, you do seem partial to it. Uh, yeah, very, I'm very, very partial. I can see me having to get another bottle at some point. Uh, loving it, loving it. Hills is here. She says, hi. Um, drill bit's here. Hey, drill bit. Need to belch. Should I belch? Or should I try not to? Let's just kind of like go neutral and see what happens. Hey, Yara. Nice to see you, Yara. Um, uh, yeah, Maddie says loving it so far. I really love this. I really love it. But then again, I'm loving everything that I got in that in that little haul that I did. Absolutely everything. But this is the I think this is the most seasonal appropriate. This is just perfect for the sun. Well, not that it's sunny at the moment. It's been a bit poo poo the last few days. But this is just so seasonally appropriate. I took it on my little break to where did I go? I thought it was north or Norwich but it wasn't I was in Suffolk <laughs> but 
Anyhow, that doesn't matter. I took it on my little holiday and I wore this a lot. And it, yeah, it's just lovely. If you like beachy scents, but it's not anything scratchy or sharp or really like really fresh. It's just so smooth. I think that's what I love about it. And that frangipani is oh, so good. So that is what I'm wearing. Uh, have you shared what you're wearing? I don't think you have. So let me know. Let me know what you're wearing, please. Clothes or perfume. <laughs> um, I've got my cat, my trusty cat dress, which I've had for years. I'll show you the cat. I'm not trying not to show you any stomach because it's massive. There's my cat on my dress. <laughs> um, Holly Bronwyn says, hello everyone from hotter than hell coast of Maine. Oh, how nice. Well, I say nice for you. <laughs> A bit hot for you, I guess. Um, Sam's here. Lovely to see you, Claire. Lovely to see you, Sam. Uh, Holly is wearing Laramane. La Ocean, so I'm guessing it's an aquatic, never heard of it. Tony's wearing the new love, green velvet. Who's that by Tony? Not heard of it. Valadina says, hi Claire, I got a little excited. Hang on, why? Oh, <laughs> she says, oh my God, I got a notification. <laughs> hey, well, good to see you, I'm glad you got your notification. John says he's wearing about 40 different perfumes, who knows? And clothes, well, it's scorching and I've been walking. John is in the nude, everyone. Uh, Valadina says it's raining and hot in Miami. Oh, so jealous. You're in Miami. Oh my God. Ilya perfumes is the green velvet. Okay. Um, Holly says that the fragrance she's wearing is called La, La, Rome, La Rome Marine. So like a mar the word marine, but, we, but mixed together with the word aroma. Very clever. <laughs> uh, and so it's a marine. <laughs> Sam, what are you wearing? Uh, Sam's probably wearing something with oud, leather, rose and patchouli. <laughs> Let me see if I'm right. Let me know. Um, let's have a little drinky. Um, sorry if you heard any noises there of the drinking sounds. 12 Pretty Things is here. I'm excited to call a live live. Yay! Glad to see you. Um, and Sam is wearing number five, Resendu Mactau. I haven't tried anything from that brand. I've heard that one compared to Baccarat Rouge. And then that puts me off because I think, are they a clone brand? And I know nothing. I don't know anything about that, but it's, I haven't felt a compulsion to try them. Drawn by Senses, hello, hope you're okay. You've been at the Liquid Imaginaire Put a Better Game. I think I will have to buy a full bottle. I've got two, those two Liquid Imaginaires I brought up uh, in a different video and didn't smell. In the Pure Distance video, I've got them here, so we're gonna smell them. Um, Hills has Oduel on one arm, Philosophicus, I can't say that, on the other. So the fig one and the vanilla one. The vanilla one's gorgeous, they're both from Diptyque. Um, I'm not a fig fan, so. Uh, the fig can F off. <laughs> um, uh, Sam says it's not like Baccarat Rouge at all. Uh, uh, you would like it, I think. Okay, maybe I need to open my mind. Open my horizons. Drillbit says, Sam's still around, Claire. You're Sam. Yes, don't worry, Drillbit. Um, uh, he is he's working late tonight and then he's working again tomorrow. So... We are not seeing each other tonight and then that gives me the chance to do a little live stream and it's all good, it's all good. Right, uh, well, I was quickly going to cover uh, this which I did a first impressions video of a little while ago. So it's Fleur d'Orchidée from Karl Lagerfeld and I paid £15 for it on All Beauty so it's a cheapy, and I just wanted to come back with a few more thoughts on it because I'm really impressed and I think it needs a little bit of a spotlight. And have it on here and basically I, I really need to belch but it's not quite happening <laughs> um basically it's a it's it, to me it smells a little bit like Guerlain terracotta to start with and Nux Prodigeuse 
so it's a beachy type fragrance and it kind of like morphs into more of a Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. It smells as good as all of them perfumes. It does not smell cheaper. If that liquid was in a Tom Ford bottle, you'd pay the price and you wouldn't complain. It is that good. It's not the most unique thing because it does smell like other beachy fragrances, but it does it really, really well. And if you're on the market for a budget beachy type fragrance or even just a really good beachy type fragrance, or if you have your eyes on something like Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, but you don't want to pay for it, I highly, highly recommend you get that. If you like Soleil Blanc or Terracotta or both, ideally if you like both, it is safe to blind buy. And if, for, if there's for some reason, some reason why you don't love it, it's only 15 pounds. Honestly, it's amazing. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> I think it might even be discontinued. It is super nice, very smooth, nothing screechy, no sharp, dry, woody aroma chemicals. It is a really lovely beachy style fragrance. It doesn't smell coconutty, but it has that kind of mono oil feel, you know, like white florals and vanilla, very smooth, very balmy. Really, really recommend that for uh, if you're on a budget and you want to smell as good as someone who's got 200 pounds to blow on a bottle of perfume. It's amazing. <sighs> Take a breath. <laughs> Pop that down there. Uh, John says, do you need us to rub your back and burp you, Claire Pear? Probably best not to, because it might go further. Like, you know, don't want to vomit. Don't want to vomit live on, uh, on my channel. I don't think I'm ready for that. I don't think you're ready for that. Valadina says, some of the niche fragrances are too popular now. I love wearing different fragrance than everyone else. So now I have to be a chemist to pair and layer fragrances to stand out. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Uh, what's it called again? It's called Fleur d'Orchidée. Um, so Fleur, French word for flower, D apostrophe, Orchidée. And it's by Carl Lagerfeld. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very impressed with that. Just thought I'd share that. Uh, Victor says, hi Claire, hugs from Croatia. I really hope you feel better soon. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, just having a, what are just having a, what do you call it? Not a flashback, a lapse. Just having a lapse today. I'm, I'm definitely eating the wrong thing or things. I'm going to have to have a few days with no snacks just to then figure out what it is that's upsetting me. I've got a, I've got a urologist appointment tomorrow. I do not know what they're going to do to me, but um, I have to go with a full bladder. They reckon that I have to go having not done a wee for two hours that's going to be really hard um, but they're going to look into why I've got a dilated urethra, urethra. so that would be good find out what what's causing a, a little blockage there and whether it's something that can be fixed or needs to be fixed but um, yeah wish me luck that's 9.50 in the morning so I'm not going to be going wild tonight just have that one drink and, um, and that will be it Right then, so next up, well, let's do the Liquids Imaginaires because uh, who was it who just mentioned those now? Hang on a minute, there we are. Uh, drawn by Sense, Drawn by Sense, I mentioned those. So let's do those. So we've got two Liquid Imaginaires. I'm really hoping that Joe joins us. Um, Joe, aka Trouble at the Mill, off of Instagram and... Um, she sometimes comes along there's a reason why i'm hoping she joins us and um it's basically all these perfumes sitting to the right of me our courtesy of joe so i really hope she does manage to join us so i'm starting with liquid in imaginaires tapis volant t-a-p-i-s-v-o-l-a-n-t -I, I do not know what those words mean i'm assuming they're french uh I don't think they're going to smell like volivants. Let's see if we can get anything out of this sample. Well, bloody hell. Um, I wish Jovoy didn't do this. They used to do such great samples. Um, I can't keep complaining. It is what it is. So Tapis Volant. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the notes are. Because when I ordered the samples, it was, what, 
I don't know, a week or two ago, and I do not know. Francis is here. Hey, Francis. Yes, glamorous showgirl Joe. Yes, yeah. that's that's the Joe that I'm talking about. Right then, tapis volant. I think it's. I think we said that's what it's called. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's really nice. So it's really musky. Um, I think there's a bit of a citrus, maybe some bergamot. So there's a little bit of a, a bright, bright citrus. <laughs> One of Sweetie's, Sweetie's hairs, despite Sweetie being um, unfortunately long, long gone now, uh, I still get Sweetie hairs every now and then haunting me <laughs> up, up my nose. <laughs> and elsewhere <laughs> and I think I just got one so bless sweetie uh, this is really nice there's something kind of earthy in here but not too heavy earthy not like a really heavy patchouli but you know um, oh I don't know what this is oh Andreas is here Tapis Volante says uh, means a flying carpet. Oh, what a nice, what a nice image. Yeah, I like this. I, I, I'm struggling to describe it. It does have like a mysterious feel. John says, ah, oh, it's one I've tried. Yes, it's nice. Tim is here. Hi, Claire. I hope you get better. That sounds hopping about awful, not having a pee for two hours. Yes. Looking good, thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think I can manage that, to be fair. I'll probably give them an hour if I can. <laughs> yeah, I, what is this? Does it smell a bit like, a touch like incense, but not smoky, almost like the dry, you know, like unlit uh, incense stick. I like that, but it feels like it needs to be on skin. It feels like it's got, um. A, a not a, not a clean musk, not a dirty musk. One of those in the middle, you know, like a brown musk. I guess I'm thinking dust, like not exactly dirt, but dust-ish. But with this bright edge, with this bright light shining through it. It's really nice. I am going to put that on skin because I like that. And it deserves, it deserves to be on skin. However, I haven't got... A great deal of skin available. That's not the right one. What did I do with it? Oh, where did I put it? Um, is it on my lap? No. Did I put it on the floor? No. That's pure distance. There it is. Panic over. Right, okay. Tapis Volant is going to go here. Just a tiny bit. And I'll let that settle and then I think we'll just start on the next one. We'll start on the next one and that is uh, Fleur de Sable. Sable I think means silk, doesn't it? Silk flower. Um, so same company, Liquid Imaginaire. Can't get it out, it's not coming out. <laughs> Stupid things. Seriously, like nothing is coming out. So, is there any? I mean, I can f I can hear it. Something's in there, but it's not coming out. Oh, something is. Yeah, little tiny bits come out now. Right, we've got a tiny bit on there. Let's see. Right. Drawn by senses, I got a sample of Perdebet from Jovoy. They certainly are generous with the samples. Hmm, what's this? So, this smells. Um, it smells more, more mass appealing. I think um, a little bit more modern niche, if that. Uh, a bit sweeter. Um, it feels like a gourmand. I'm getting a little bit of a pepper. 
pepper slash like a dry resin. I do need to belch. Oh, there we go. I do get some aroma chemical feel from this a little bit. Not in a really bad way. It's a it's like a peppery, dry, slightly sweet fragrance. But it does have, there's this, now I don't know what it is, there's this note or ingredient. And I believe it's in, uh, what's it called? By the fireplace, or by the fireside, by the fireplace. And it's in quite a lot of modern niche perfumes and I think I smell it in Demi's Minuet et Demi as well. So it's kind of like a sweet, almost smoky type note. And I can smell that. And I can smell pepper. This is a little bit, it's not um, burnt, oh, oh you're saying, John's saying you got burnt rubber. Um, I didn't get burnt rubber but it, it's maybe because of pepper, burnt rubber, pepper could potentially be interchangeable. Um, sable is sand. Okay. Yeah, this to me, just because it reminds me of a lot of modern niche perfumes, doesn't feel as exciting. Um, not to say it's bad or unpleasant in any way, it's not, it's very pleasant. Um, but it just smells a little bit like, mm, yeah, this is a modern niche perfume with lots of very common, um, not so lots of very common, but it smells like it's got some common aroma chemicals going on in it. And yeah, for that reason, it doesn't excite me, but I think it smells good. But I much prefer the flying carpet and let's hang on here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know actually. This is no, this smells like aldehydes now. It smells like those soapy aldehydes. You know, like clean, creamy, soapy, musk. Yeah, to me it's quite soapy. Uh, those of you that have tried the flying carpet, do you get that? Uh, Andrea says, I get this, I, I got this smoky sweet note in Amouage recently. I, it must be an aroma chemical that is on Vogue. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, it seems to be things like, lots of things like that about at the moment in modern niche. I think I just prefer slightly more classical, old fashioned, or natural. <laughs> just prefer naturals these days. Oh, Joe's here. Hi everyone, she says, greetings from the Isle of Wight. I'm glad you're here, Joe, because I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that you sent me. We haven't got there yet. We've just done the two liquid Imaginaires, which are, you know, quite nice, but they haven't blown my socks off. Although, if I'm completely honest, I'm not wearing socks. Now, there's, there's more to this, um, what's this one called? I've forgotten. The second one. There's more to this than I gave it credit for. But how the hell I describe it, I don't know. <laughs> it also feels like it might have some creamy aldehyde sitting underneath it. Kind of like a cleanish vibe to it. So anyhow, um, yeah, I'm struggling to describe those. So I'd rather just move on and hide my shame. So um, let's do the stuff what Joe sent me. And the lovely Jo uh, sent me a really nice box of stuff, like a, a massive box of, of perfume. And it was so generous and such beautiful uh, things that she sent me. So um, we're just gonna try and get through them as quickly as possible because there's a lot, there's a lot. Um, time to mask up is here. He says, hey, 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 hello from New York. Hey, time to mask up. Um, and Heather, oh no, Heather said hello earlier, so we know Heather's here. So, Jo sent me, first of all, I could not believe she sent me a full, a full bottle of perfume. 
and she sent me this one here. It's called A E O M All Eyes On Me is what that is uh, short for. And um, this is by Bijon Perfumes. And I did try this a way back when. And we were sent some, back when I used to do videos with Dan, um, and we used to do the frag chat regularly with Smelly and Smurphy. And um, we had the samples from the, the range. And this one to me was always a bit too much. Uh, it's, it's, it's called All Eyes On Me after all. It's a really big, bold fragrance. And the one that I loved, which we will get to because Joe kindly sent me a decant of it. The one that I really loved was Subli Aura Sublime, which is a Cecile Zarokian fragrance. Um, but this one, All Eyes On Me, I don't know who the perfumer is. Um, I feel so... I feel so belchy, but it's not coming. <laughs> um, right, um, yeah, so all eyes on me. I don't recall the notes, but here's how it smells. Oh, this one is Cecile as well. Um, this one, it smells like a mixture of Immortelle. So Immortelle has, um, I always feel like it has two sides to it. It has this kind of maple syrup like thick syrupy sweet side but at the same time it has a, a dry curry leaf kind of side to it almost like cumin like how cumin but not quite as pungent as cumin uh, I don't know if this is immortelle but I would if you said if you held a gun to my set my head and said guess a note that that would be the note I'd guess immortelle um and it does feel like it has both of those facets, like a slightly dry curry-ish, curry leaf, not like a you know a bubbling curry with meat in it and everything, but a curry leaf, a dry curry leaf. You know how you can buy them from the shops to, to flavor your food? And um, a syrupy, uh, a thick syrupy thing, like a, like a maple syrup. And I also do feel like there is some ambroxin in here, or, similar so ambroxin has a, a brother called cetalox and um, you also have amber max i don't know exactly what it is but it feels like there's one of those dry woody aroma chemicals quite strong in here so yeah this is it's not for me <laughs> but thank you joe for sending it to me <laughs> i'm not being ungrateful but you know that I, i'm always honest about how I feel about stuff. Um, Joe, I think you said you got a little um, job lot of them. Um, yeah, I'm sure if I gave it time on skin, there'd be more facets to it. But for me, it's quite dry. It's got a, a decent sweetness to it, but it is quite dry and a touch on the aroma chemical side for my taste. But really, really interesting if you like big, bold statement fragrances, it is a really interesting one. It's a good one for that. Uh, Andrea says, oh, Bichon, I only know the mont Foire. of course you only know the mint one. <laughs> um, so let's stick with the, the same brand and uh, let's find it. Here we go. Nope, oh, that's not it. That's going to be it. So um, the label slightly, uh, what do you call it? Melted. It didn't melt, but you know what I mean? The ink, I don't know the word. But, um, oh, what is wrong with me? I just can't, sometimes I just can't find the words. I still can't find the way to describe what happened to that writing. I don't know. But um, the writing's gone. And uh, when I smelt it, I was like, oh, I know that. I know that fragrance. And then when I saw the bottle of All Eyes On Me, A-E-O-M, I saw the bottle of All Eyes on me, and then I smelt that again. And I was like, oh, it's Aura Sublime. And then I think I was able to just kind of like make out a letter that that confirmed that it was in the right place. And um, it was Aura Sublime. I love this. It's a really, really beautiful uh, vanilla. But it starts off, um, let's pop it over here. Starts off with a, a citrus, I think. Is it an orange or a lemon? I'm not quite sure now. If you like 
Zerjoff's Lira. I've put it in that ballpark, not because it smells really that similar, but because it does the same thing, as in it starts off with a citrus and then it moves into a, uh, a vanilla, although Lira goes more caramel, whereas this goes more vanilla resin. Mm, it is so good, it is ridiculous. I'm surprised it doesn't get a lot of hype, but I don't think they really pushed it. Um, right, just reading your comments. Shaver Fonts here. <sighs> Great Sebastian video today. Top 10 sensual fragrances that former British Health Minister Matt Hancock wore to seduce his mistress, Gina Cold Alonji Angelo, and destroy their marriages and his career. Well, that's um, quite a headline, <laughs> Shaver Fonts. Um, I haven't got around to watching that one, but I'll certainly make that a priority. <laughs> Joe says maybe the postman had a sneaky spray, yeah. Um, the ink has run. Yes, Tim, that's what, that's what it is. The ink has run. Oh my God, my head, come on. Um, yes, like Tender Madeline by Les Santos. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so yeah. That's kind of what it is. Starts off with a citrus, you can still smell, but it's not a really sharp one. It's quite rounded and smooth. And then you can still smell underneath that there is a, a sweet kind of vanilla coming through. It's really musky and balmy and smooth and lovely. And then the I actually like it better when the citrus is gone. And I've always said it's called Aura Sublime and it really, it totally lives up to its name. You get a sublime aura when you wear it. It really is sublime. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely amazing. And thank you, Joe, for sending that to me because I will definitely use that. Um, right, to pop that down. I'm going to go quite quickly because Joe sent me a lot of stuff. And uh, let's do the, I'll tell you what, we'll save the Galans for last so um uh, i have this little box here i don't know anything about this it's called more is more and it's um judith lieber judith judith lieber that sounds like a german name i don't know anything about uh, any of this <laughs> i have had a little spray of all of them so apparently you can layer them all i think that's what we um what i established more is more, so and there's a little thing so you can use your phone, wave it at it, and it'll probably tell you something. Um, so there's one called Gourmand, one called Zest, and one called Floral. And I did, uh, as I say, I smelt them all. There's one that I quite like. Um, so we'll do Gourmand first. I think I remember thinking Gourmand could have been called Zest. Let's see if I still think that. Yeah, so Gourmand definitely has a citrus opening. Um, but you can smell that there is some sweeter things going on underneath. What they are, I don't know. <laughs> hmm, not coffee. It's quite a light Gourmand. The citrus, it does feel a bit floral as well. And maybe just some vanilla. And Joe says this apparently comes as a three in one bottle. Okay, so the gourmand's nice. I mean, it's not groundbreaking, but it's definitely really pleasant. It's not too sweet or thick or heavy. It's definitely a light version of a gourmand. And let's try and zest. So zest. Right, John says, Sam did a video on this. It has some ginormous complex high-tech atomizer, doesn't it? Oh, okay. So all the uh, the three things come together in one bottle. Joe says, so you can choose which to layer or wear singular. So citrus has a kind of like, um, is it a citrus zest? It's called zest, but yeah. Citrus smells like 
very clean zesty citruses a bit like a white grapefruit so a bit bitter a little bit bitter a little bit green and there's an underlying sort of woody note almost like paper or pencil sharpenings or both so it's not just citruses you can definitely smell a bit more to it and it has a bitterness but it has a sweetness as well so that's quite nice so that is a zest and then we're going to go for floral i think this might be my favorite one so i've lost my uh, live chat let's try and go back to it let's spray let us spray we'll spray the floral one here we go and we'll pop those out of the way so This is, this is nice, but it's not just floral. It smells more like, um, a little bit like sweets, like um, hard boiled sweets, hard candies, as you say, over the pond. Um, something in there, um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a note like, is it like a marigold or something that I don't quite like. I don't remember smelling this before now. It does, it smells a bit like Jolly Ranchers. Apple, apple maybe? I don't know, this is this one's called floral and I'm, I'm picking out fruit, so. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's a little bit like an apple shampoo. I don't know, I thought, I, I remember thinking I like this one, but I don't really feel that way now. I um, can't remember what that one is. Anyway. Um, so you wear them uh, singly or all together. It's quite an interesting concept, but we're going to move on quickly. So quick swig. Um, just reading your comments. Okay, right. Okay, so now we have. Uh, it's, I think it's a, a Casamorati is, is Zerzhov, isn't it? Um, so we've got Casamorati Bouquet Idyll. I honestly have really key, uh, the, the, fee, the three times I've tried this, I have changed my mind drastically each time. I really don't know how I feel about it and I don't know how I'm going to feel right now. So let's just, uh, we'll do a spray. So this is Bouquet Idyll from Casamorati. I mean, look at all of that, Joe. that is so generous of you. It's so kind. Um, this one, the, this one, when I first smell it, it reminds me of that Western oud, you know, that synthetic Western oud, that kind of, the one that's made for people who don't really like or can't handle real oud. It, it just reminds me of cheap, and it sounds really horrible. <laughs> I'm not being ungrateful, but this is just the opening. It does remind me of, of some cheap uh, fragrances from, you know, those houses, um, Middle Eastern brands that are very, very cheap, have kind of tacky bottles, um, and uh, everything's oud. Um, it does remind me of that. It reminds me a little bit of Ragbala Taffa, but not that, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, it's, and I find that it gets a lot better once you get past that first sort of 10 minutes. And I've had it on skin, I've, I've, I'm, like, I'm literally like twinging, like my hand wants to touch my knee because I specifically remember that I had it on my left knee because I was already covered in perfume because obviously I was going through everything that Joe sent me and I had this on my left knee and I can still remember how it kept changing and how I was going from like not liking it to liking it. Um, has anyone tried this and what are your thoughts on it? Because I really do not know where I where I stand with it. Um, um, Joe says, I enjoy this fragrance but find it doesn't last on me. Uh, disappointed with the performance. 
Uh, Tim says, I love the way you can put names to smell so quickly. It's a great talent you have. Well, thank you, Tim. Um, John, haha, <laughs> Claire, was that at me? You're still getting some. <laughs> no, it wasn't aimed at you, John. <laughs> John sent me a sample of something and, and I, I said, I probably won't like it. In fact, it will probably um, be as bad as what I just said about Western Oods. <laughs> but John's still sending it anyway, bless him. Uh, Time to Musk Up says, I have trouble sometimes with Zerge Off, but when it hits, it hits good. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, I, I love my Renaissance 1861. It's an absolutely beautiful, fresh fragrance with a little bit of uniqueness to it. Lasts really well for a freshie. Love it. I think Zerjoff Naxos is really nice. To me, it, I ended up getting rid of mine because it was too linear, but the smell itself is a wonderful, like it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, this, I don't know what it is about this. Um, now, how, what else can I say? Okay, it's a bit sweet. So it does, um, it feels like it, if any of you have tried Italica from Zerzhov, which was exclusive to, I think it was Harrods for a little while, and now it's everywhere or, or a lot more available, something in my eye. Um, it feels like it has a bit of what's in Italica. But to me, Italica is so well loved. People absolutely love it. They go crazy for it. I had a decant and I can see why people love it. But to me, it just didn't excite me. It was just kind of like sweet and very flat. Like um, it didn't seem to change. I, I'm really fussy. I need things to change otherwise, especially if they're sweet. Uh, if they're sweet, they need to change. And it didn't really, it was very flat. It was just like hummed along. It's very nice, you know, very nice kind of like, I don't know what it was, vanilla and almond mostly. Um, it just didn't excite me. And I feel like there's a bit of Italica in here. So it does feel like there's um, some vanilla, a little bit of a, maybe like a clean woods, like a white woods, like a cedar or something like that. It's called Bouquet Ideal. Do I get any flowers? I don't know. Maybe, but I can't pinpoint. Is there a tiny bit of rose maybe? I really don't know. To me, it's more of a woody gourmand. I don't know what the notes are. It's not, it's really not bad. Um, it's just not quite me. It might have been me at some point. Drawn by sense, do I like any ouds or just not your thing? How about the Dior ouds? I've tried some of the fragrances with real oud. So some of the original Dore's, um, a few other things that have got real oud. And I seem to be much better with real oud but that's not to say that I like oud in general um I, I think when you smell real oud to me it, it can smell a little bit like being in the countryside and they're muck spreading and I don't mind that because it smells natural even though it's poo it smells natural but um when I smell some of these modern cheap fragrances with oud notes in them which obviously won't be natural I, and it's not because I know it's not real oud. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not being a snob about it, but there is, I think they use something specifically, whether it's one material or whether there's a few materials that go together to make the oud accord that I just don't get on with. Um, and 24 gold, Ragbala Taffa have it in spades and I cannot bear it. Uh, I find it especially teamed with sweet notes as well, like a sickeningly sweet and, and yet offensive, <laughs> but not in, a, not in an animal's bum kind of way. It's something else about it, I just really can't, I just don't like it. Um, but no, I don't love oud anyway, but I have, um, I definitely have fragrances with, with oud, um, not many. Um, but there's some uh, where I don't even pick up on it at all, and um, but I don't really like it, no. <laughs> to cut a long story short. 
I could do without it. Um, so we'll pop that out of the way. Um, for me, I've, I've got to be completely honest with you, that smells like it could be by a cheap Arabian Middle Eastern brand. Um, it doesn't smell particularly special or natural. I think that's what it is. There's nothing really natural smelling in there. Um, Joe says, please don't worry, you don't have to be diplomatic if you don't vibe with it. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, for your understanding. But when we move on to Galan, which we're, we're just about to, uh, everything's going to change. Uh, Joe says, it was one of those I wanted for a while. The anticipation was better than the reality for me. Um, Uh, John says it smells red, thick, sweet and odd to me, the synthetic oud. Yeah. Uh, Tony smelt some real Indonesian oud with Matt from Question and Sense and it wasn't barnyardy at all. It was rich and sweet and nutty, gorgeous stuff. I don't think I've smelt it isolated. I've only smelt it within things. So uh, that would be interesting. Right, let's have a swig. I'm getting a bit dehydrated over here. Right then, so we're going to move on to the Galan. So Joe sent me some gorgeous, gorgeous decants of Galan. And let's start. So I have smelt this before. I did have a sample or uh, maybe do have a sample somewhere. But we're going to smell it again. Angelique Noir. So this is from the Lart et Matière line. And this is a gorgeous sort of fruity. To me, it's like a fruity green fragrance, that, but then the vanilla comes through really, really strong. And I think that's with quite a lot of the Lata Matières, not every one of them, but most of them seem to have this theme of, of having a, a very strong vanilla that comes through uh, once it's sort of been on your skin a little while. And Jo says, this one is my fave ever. So this is lovely because it has a, a little freshness, but you can, it smells a little bit powdery. It smells almost like apricotty, like fruity, like orangey fruity. Not, doesn't smell like orange, but if you think of apricot or just orange colored fruits, that's how it smells to me. But it also smells a little bit green, like fresh green, fresh greenery but you can smell the vanilla underneath already. And it almost has like a tinge of almond. It is really, really beautiful. Jo says, if I, if I could only keep one of my fragrances out of my collection, this would be it. It's a good one. <laughs> um, this is one I chose as part of my prize when I won Guerlain UK Consultant of the Year. Oh, how nice and what a lovely memory to have with it as well. Yeah, it's really, really good. Angelique Noir is, is really good. The whole La Matier line is stunning, in my opinion. Um, Mudgy, most, most of the Guerlain higher end and some of the lower end are good, pretty good. I'm not a fan of the uh, Absolute, um, the Orient, uh, line um, because they they're that kind of like bombastic loud Middle Eastern type fragrances they're not really my thing uh, we are it's in the house we are sentient here hey so we're gonna move on to the next one and look at all this spirit choose double vanilla that I've got and I've yeah I've wanted to retry this for ages because I wondered if and I definitely like it and I wondered if I'd kind of like, I kind of made up my mind that it was really nice but I didn't need it a long time ago. But then I got a bit like that with a lot of vanillas, even though I love vanilla as a note, I did have a lot and I, I felt like I needed to whittle them down a bit because a lot of fragrances do, you know, they start off one way. Vanilla fragrances, they might start off with this interesting note, that interesting note, but ultimately they kind of drive down to quite a strong vanilla with um, just a hint of what, what was in them at the beginning, I think, or I, I, I can't talk. I had quite a few fragrances that did that 
Um, so people have always described this as boozy. And I always remember thinking, I don't think, I, I used to think it wasn't boozy. And now I realise that it is. Um, boozy as in maybe a rum. Um, what would you say, Joe? The is it like a um, or is it like a bourbon whiskey kind of? Um, might even be a touch like a whiskey, but not too much, and it it doesn't hang around too long in that boozy phase. And then this one I remember does dry down to a very clear and 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 clean. Uh, lovely fluffy vanilla. And Joe says my first bottle of this was the old bottle design and it was so rich and smooth my current bottle I find a lot weaker. Yeah. Yeah I mean how else do I describe it? I guess it's slightly woody, slightly spicy, um, it's almost like a spiced rum. Yeah, like a, a spiced rum. And, but it's really smooth. Spiced rum that's come, that's come from an oak cask barrel, you know. Um, yeah, it's really nice. I like that a lot. So I'm so pleased to have all of that which is lovely. Ooh. So let's move on then. And another one I'm really pleased to be able to test properly is Tonka Imperial. And this one, I have always felt, and I've only ever really, I don't know if I've ever had a sample or not. Um, most of my, my thoughts and feelings that I've, I've built up about it over the years have come from very brief testing in shops. And I always felt like it was too heavy on the tonka, a bit too spicy. And ha having the sample being able to test it properly, I realised it's not quite how I remembered it. It's better than I remembered it. Because this one gets a lot of hype. Everyone loves it. And I used to be like, mm, I don't know, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit rich, it's a bit spicy, it's a bit too heavy on the tonka for me. Um, so it's actually... Um, it's definitely a Tonka fragrance, but it has a freshness. It has some of the almond facets that Tonka has, as well as the spicy vanillic facets. And it smells, I think this is there rose in here. Um, it smells a little bit rosy, but not like a rose fragrance. Like a, there's a facet of rose to the, the Tonka Accord. It's really nice. Yes, it definitely smells vanillic as well as everything I just said. Joe says, if you compare the colour of it to Tonka, the old Spirit Juice Double Vanille was this colour. So Spirit Juice Double Vanille used to be this colour. The new version, Joe is saying, is more like this colour. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. There's a slight smokiness about it as well. It feels, it's definitely something I would pick for cold weather. And even like, even though the weather's not great at the moment, I wouldn't choose this. I feel like I'd want it to be quite cold. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, let's just quickly check your comments, people. Um. Uh, Holly's saying, I can't do most oud either, except the fragrance Dubois scents. I love those. Um, Heather wants gourmand cacan. Well, you know, we might be able to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Lily's here. She says, hello, Claire and gang. Hello, Lily. Uh, she says, I was looking to buy this last night, but it's not listed on the website. What, Tonka Imperial? Okay, 
Holly says, girl and decants, what lovely gifts, yum. Yeah, I, what generous, lovely, amazing gifts. So that's Tonka Imperial, we'll pop that one down there. Time for a little swig. And then we have one more. So I have here a gourmand coca, and that ink has run a little bit. The ink has run as, as Tim helped me <laughs> to, uh, to find the right words. Um, so gourmand coca, and you know what? This has been a really lovely surprise as well. So I did have a sample of this a long time ago, and I kind of decided that as much as it's really nice, I used to think it was too rich. Again, I used to think it was too rich, like I did with Tonka Imperial. But having tried it properly on the skin, knowing that I've got the big decants, I could spray a lot. What I loved about this is actually it's not as rich. So when you first spray it, it does smell rich. Um, it smells like dark, hot chocolate with some cocoa powder and a slug of rum. And then when it dries down, it goes lovely and fluffy and musky, which I really like. It's another one that's probably got quite a big dose of vanilla in it. So I used to think this was like purely a dark chocolate kind of rum fragrance, but really it's not. It's lovely how it dries down and it gets soft and fluffy and musky. And because I, I see Lola from Lola Sense talks about it a lot. She absolutely loves it. Quite a few people really love it, and I totally get it, I really do. It is gorgeous. It's not too rich and it's not too sweet. So I think if you like um, to compare it to other chocolatey type fragrances, Panna London's Pink Champagne Truffle, that is really rich. Like That's a lot richer than this, and it kind of remains darker and richer throughout and that's a fruity one as well because it's got the raspberry but this one I like how it changes I like how it starts off quite rich quite dark and then it kind of gently the richness kind of becomes lighter and it just gets this um just kind of clean musky feel about it um We are, so I think they're changing the bottles, so it might be offline for now. Um, yeah, I have heard some rumours. Uh, I think there's a lot going on at Golan. I think um, in terms of the Lart et Matier, and also a lot of their standard line, the line that you find a lot more easier, I think they're rebottling a lot of it, so it's more uniform. Heather says, I love this. We'll have to gift this to myself. Yes, you should, Heather. You deserve it. Tony says, Tim, I'll go looking. This sounds great. Yeah, I think you'll like this one, Tony. You definitely need to try some of these. The All the upper end, the ones that lean a touch gourmand, so any of them with vanilla, pretty much, they're all really, really good. Yeah, so gourmand kakan. Oh. So good. Yeah, I like that one a lot. So it's so nice to have these. Thank you, Joe, so much for sending me such wonderful, wonderful goodies. And yeah, I've got a lot of playing to do with my new toys. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thank you, Joe. And um, I'm probably gonna go in a minute because I'm not feeling that great. I mean, my tummy's been okay, but I feel a bit, you know, how do I explain it? I'm probably just tired probably just tired um, but yeah struggling to make my words come out properly so it's, it's kind of draining to have to think before you speak <laughs> more than normal you know what I mean um, so I am gonna say cheers to you all oh I just played dominoes with all the, de <laughs> the decants so I picked up my drink I not accidentally knocked one of them and then they, they all sent all the others <laughs> over but they're fine no one was injured all my little soldiers are fine so thank you so much for watching again thank you to joe for for these beautiful beautiful smellies for me to play with 
Was there anything else I needed to show you? I don't think so. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. So take care and I will see you all very, very soon. I hope. Mwah.